So sometimes I buy crazy military equipment in the government options. And sometimes my neighbors get really nervous when I do because it looks like I just bought a fifth wheel mounted remote control rocket launcher and about to shoot some stuff over at Grumpy's house. And uh, I'll aim a little higher. Oh man. So, although it looks like I may have lost my mind at this point to some of you, and I might have because I actually bought this about six years ago and then I sold it and I just brought it back. But it's not a rocket launcher at all, no matter how much it looks like one here. And it's also remote control, which is really cool. <laughs> uh, this is actually a detachable towing unit, much like my Zach lift over there but also very different than my Zach lift because when it comes to heavy duty towing, this thing absolutely blows away every detachable towing unit or towing unit in general, every heavy wrecker, every detachable, anything made for heavy towing, this blows it out of the water, hands down, without a freaking doubt. It will heavy tow far better than that Zach lift, far better than any giant rotator, far better than literally anything else out there. It wins no two ways about it when it comes to heavy towing. But when it comes to absolutely everything else except the super heavy towing, this loses and that Zach lift wins all the way around. So today I'm gonna show you what this thing is, how it works. We're gonna hook up to that school bus over there. Um, we would do the, the international here, the rollback, but the school bus has a much more open frame, so it's much easier to see how this thing goes underneath and connects and works. To show you how it works, how it distributes the weight, why it's so much better than that Zach lift over there or any other anything when it comes to towing, and then also why that Zach lift beats us in literally every other category but super heavy towing. So we got it all folded up. Uh, I say we back this over the school bus over there to hook up to it and we'll show you how it works. Oh, and I'll also tell you the story of how I've already owned this unit and sold it and how I got it back and why. So yeah, story time. So I say we start with just getting this thing unfolded and hook it up to a school bus to show how it works. And while we do that, I'll kind of mix in how I originally bought this thing, sold it and ended up with it again. So first, I guess I left this on, but uh, there's two ways this thing can be ran. One is it has its own electric motors in there and its own hydraulic reservoir with a battery pack so you can uh, run. I have it disconnected right now. There's a switch in here that turns that on and off, but you turn your power on and here's your voltmeter right here. And then when you press this button, it activates the electric pumps in there that pump hydraulic fluid. And then you got your valves right here to run the unit or when you press the buttons on the remote, it activates the pumps and the uh, spool valves at the same time to run the unit completely off electric. So this thing can be ran totally off electric, no PTO required, meaning you can put it on literally any fifth wheel truck and run it. You don't need a PTO, you don't need any special truck. All you need is a truck with a fifth wheel, which obviously I have. But to make it much more powerful and faster and uh, well, power, it'll do the same thing either way, but just much faster, easier to operate. I have it running off the PTO of my truck which this truck has that special dual PTO setup on it. And right now we are running this off only one of my two hydraulic pumps. That means we're running at uh, 12 gallons a minute is going through this at the moment. I can switch that over and run 24 gallons a minute through it if I want to, but as you'll see, 12 is plenty fast. So we'll just run it on 12. So when we're running off the PTO, inside of this box is a switch that disconnects the hydraulic pumps so that when we push the buttons on the remote, it doesn't also fire up the electric pumps in there. And when I get this unfolded, I'll show you the super cool rotating battery box that's in there so that this thing can fold itself up on the ground. But either way, let's uh, get the same unhooked. This is how it would go down the road when you have it on the back of the truck. Uh, you have a couple of shackles that sit in here. They are right here. Normally these are right here and you tie them down to the chassis on the back of the truck and that's what stops it from bouncing around. You can see it's got these little flip down feet right here that come down and sit on your frame much like how the Zach lift does. 
but these ones fold up out of the way so that then the unit is usable. So we will start with, this is its transport position. Remote is on. So we need to get this arrow to line up with this hole in order to stand this unit up. See this slide track right here ends up in this slide track right here, like kind of like, and then goes up and down like a forklift mass. So we need to retract these rams. So we will pull this thing back until those two arrows line up. And you see that whole mast body is just sliding backwards. Up here, I'll show you, there are the front legs that it sits on. As you can see, as we run this back and forth, you see those legs and those Teflon pads just slide on the frame right there to bring it in and out of transport position. So we retract the rams, it says right there, mast retract, until we get this arrow to line up with this hole. See some weight shift happened, a little far. There we go. Now we grab this pin that sits right here and we put it in there. Come over the other side, this pin, put in that hole. We don't need to worry about the clips or anything right now. So now we're going to extend that ram back out. But now that this pin is here, this can't slide forward back up into its travel position. So since this pin just created a hinge point, this pushing out is gonna stand this whole thing up. And now to be clear, like all this seems kind of confusing, the true hitch is an incredibly capable unit, but an incredible easy one to screw up and hurt some stuff. You, it's like the Zach lift over there, man, that thing is so easy, so user friendly. A anyone could run that thing. This takes, uh, so you really have to think about what you're doing. You can screw up really easy in a lot of ways. And that being said, I ran one of these for like a year and it's been probably five years since I've ever I, this is the first time I'm gonna hook up to anything in like five years so I'm probably pretty rusty but now we want to extend our mass cylinder back out and that's gonna stand the unit up because we created a hinge point there and that's a, that's 7,500 pounds this whole unit and we're gonna go until this thing folds all the way down into its track there and then this just moves up a little bit, taking weight off the pins so we can pull the pins out. Now we come to this side, pull this pin out. Now, since the pin's out, we retract again. So we just retracted to slide the thing back, put a pin in, extended, that folded it up. And now that we pulled the pin out and we'll retract, it'll slide down and that will lock everything into that mass support there you can't really see right now but you will in a minute so now we retract and the whole unit comes down and you see this blade right here is now behind those slide blocks so now this whole mast track is locked in place as long as we stay with this coming up out of here it's locked in it can't go either way it's just purely an up and down movement so what you're supposed to do at this point, but I never did because I just figured I'd pay attention and not do it, is you're supposed to put these shackles back in here in that hole, and that will stop this from being able to go up through those slide blocks and free this out of the mass track. But I just like watch it and try to remember that. So now, now our retract and extend runs our mast up and down like a forklift. And that's all based on this pin right here, creating a hinge point to flip it up and down. Slide, you, so that same ram slides it back and forth this way, stands it up and down and runs it up and down this way, all dependent on how you have it pinned. So I'm saying there's a lot of very easy ways to screw this up. So now we wanna fold our legs down. So we go to our boom cylinders, that's the mast. The legs are the boom. So we boom out or extend our boom cylinders and the legs fold down and you'll start to see this thing look like a towing unit instead of a crazy fifth wheel mounted rocket launcher which i'd be pretty fun too i guess if we got some little like model rockets and strapped to it we technically would have a rocket launcher 
That's just some of the shackles flipping over. It's fine. So that we bring this down and you can see how absolutely beefy the mass or the booms are legs booms whatever you want to call them now this goes under that and we're using the school bus even though it's so lightweight just because it's it's so open you can see so these here are your tire stops and they are locked in place with these set screws here and these pins right here you can slide these stops forward and backwards depending on the vehicle you're towing what you ideally want is the front bumper as close to this as possible. These are padded to protect all of this. So you don't want to hit that, but you want to be close. So this is, you see, I don't have much at all front overhang on this truck or this bus. So those can go forward a bit. Something like my rollback or this truck here, the setback axle, you're going to need to bring them back some. So we will always kill your remote. That way, if you hit buttons, on accident while you're underneath doing stuff like that your remote doesn't kill you so we loosen these up these are what lock it in place now this unit i uh i bought a pair of these in a government auction like six years ago when i was still down in california see this just slides out so once i move it forward i'm probably going to want to be in this area here so we'll put this back down and now as we find our hole it should pop in place uh, either way i bought a pair of these units they're called true hitches come on why are you not so it's just being a pain we can see where the holes are on that side so i'll come back There it is. So that just popped in when we lined up with the hole. And then these set screws are the ones that actually lock in place. But yeah, I bought two of them, a matching set in a government auction from actually the same exact military yard that this trailer came from. And just like this trailer, both of them were brand new, still packaged up, had never once been used. They actually did not even have batteries in them. They didn't have any hydraulic fluid in them. They were still completely packaged up as shipped from the manufacturer, never once even unpacked. And these units for storage and shipping, they actually flip around the other way and sit upside down on the ground. Uh, I got a picture here of what they look like when they're packaged for shipping and how I picked them up. And then uh, I got them all set up, got both of them running and functional and wired up to, and converted over to 12 volt to, from 24 and filled with oil and did all the things and made them all functional and i only wanted one but i found a deal on two so i bought two and i sold one still as a brand new unit and that was this one right here so there it is so when you line up with the hole that automatically goes in and then these two are lined up with holes behind but so I sold this one here brand new never used it had actually it had been hooked to a truck once I did hook it up to a truck and lift it just to make sure it fully functioned correctly before selling it so it hooked to one truck never towed one down the road and then the other one I kept and ran for quite a while and towed a bunch of stuff with it and uh, used it and I actually still owned that second unit um, when we moved up here to Oregon and for a while after we were up here in Oregon um, I think that's gonna be pretty good on our spacing there um, and it, when we moved up here to Oregon some of you know the truck I had at the time I had a low bed trailer kind of like this but off the back one a sliding axle trailer and I had a true hitch and I had a white a Freightliner sleeper truck kind of like this set up um, to do heavy towing this is super heavy towing not normal heavy towing and haul equipment that was my plan to do with Cascade Heavy Rescue which is why the business was named that when I moved up here to Oregon but while we were in the middle of our move the truck caught on fire and burned to the ground lost everything with that uh, a whole bunch of screwy stuff couldn't afford a new one at the time 
heavy trucking kind of went out the window because I couldn't, we're in the middle of move, starting new jobs, new place, couldn't afford a new truck. All that went away. So I ended up, I hung on to the true hitch for quite a while, sold the trailer that I had, and I hung on to the true hitch just in case, but after six months or so, money was tight, I had to sell it. And I sold my true hitch that I kept. This was the one I sold brand new, the one I kept and ran, I sold and it went to Texas. This one went to a guy up here in Oregon. And uh, what I'm thinking here, you see, we've got folded up now with the Zach lift or any underreach truck, we would obviously be much closer. And then we would extend the underreach, grab the truck, and then we pull it to us. With this unit, we have to back this underneath the truck we're hooking up to. And as you can see, that's a lot of very big stuff out there that'd be very easy to hit things as you're backing up. So you can see he installed a backup camera on this, but it's not obviously not hooked to anything in my truck right now, so that's not gonna do us any good. And I never had a camera on the one I ran, so what I ended up doing was just going very slow and careful when I backed into things. But there's another option, and that's the option we're gonna do today. So, so uh, long story short, I ended up, when money got tight and I was just running like little light duty tow trucks, so that was all I could afford to do, I sold my true hitch that was still sitting down in California waiting for me to come pick it up. It went to Texas, I was super bummed. And then I've been without one ever since. These are incredibly hard to find, by the way. Um, fast forward all these years later, I now have multiple big trucks and big wreckers and rollbacks and stuff and trailers and basically between this trailer, that truck and that true hitch, that's almost basically the setup I had when we originally moved up here to Oregon and this is what Cascade Heavy Rescue was supposed to be four, four or five years ago, four and a half years ago and it's finally back to that point plus has some other really cool stuff too but back to this so we're going to turn our remote back on and I think we gotta turn our remote back on how we do this come on Why aren't you doing the thing? Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, so we're gonna set this on the ground, flatten it out. So the one option is to back underneath what you're gonna hook up to. You just have to go very slow and careful. The other is to hit the shift button and then your mast function becomes your winch function. And there's a 10,000 pound winch down here in the base. So we can pull these off. And it's this cable is winched out. So this is a 10,000 pound hydraulic winch. And we can take the vehicle we're gonna to tow and just winch it to us. Now obviously with those legs being so thick, very low clearance trucks and low front bumper trucks are a problem. So to get around that problem, uh, you build yourself some little ramps. And the guy I sold this to who was up here in Oregon, over on the coast in Oregon, um, he built a set of ramps. I'll show them to you. He built these ramps right here. I currently have them underneath my rollback to raise it up a little because I was doing some maintenance on it and wanted a little more room to get in and out underneath of it. But you see they just step up and they have a little stop at the end. Got some handle straps on the side. And if you have a low truck, you're trying to get those things under, you would put those ramps in front of the tires and then that bottom winch, you would winch the vehicle up onto the ramps. Then you got room to hook up to it. So back to our long story that I made short and I'm now gonna make longer again. Uh, I sold the, my, my true hitch that I always ran. I was super bummed because I really like that thing. It was so handy for the heavy, because remember I had a company where we hauled heavy equipment, low bed work, heavy haul, stuff like that. So in the towing world, I usually did the super heavy stuff. And when, I say, when I'm talking heavy towing with this true hitch, I'm not talking about tractor trailers and normal stuff like this. The, the, the Zach lifts, the heavy wreckers, the rotators, they can all do that just fine. I'm talking about super heavy, I'm talking about like loaded concrete mixtures that are 20,000 pounds on the front axles, loaded garbage trucks, uh, the big utility company six by six line trucks that are 
super, super heavy and put every heavy wrecker out there overweight on their drive axles because you gotta think, heavy wreckers are heavy, including that Zacliff unit, it's heavy. So you're already, I think with the Zacliff on, I'm like 24 to 25,000 pounds on my drive axles, empty. Now you put the 12,000 pound front axle of a loaded tractor trailer here on top of the 24 you already have there, 34 is your legal limit, so you're over that, just on that, now you think of weight transfer, what comes off the front end because of your teeter-totter effect, and all that weight goes onto those drives too. We have overweight permits for that reason, so I have annual overweight permits that are good for a year in Oregon, Washington, California, Idaho, Nevada, so I can run through all of those states, and I'm already permitted to go overweight on my drive axles when towing, all is good there, but if you gotta go long distance or don't wanna mess with permits, this unit here is your answer and you will see why here in just a minute. So now, let's winch this thing in and make sure those masks are gonna clear and it's gonna be straight because one thing about the true hitch, it's turning some, I don't want it to do that. Being straight is one of the most important things with this true hitch. You want to be straight, which we are not. So I got this sight right here and the mast of that, so. There we go. Get straight, right, I think, in this range. And if we, now, we're up against our stops. Oh, we could have came so much farther forward. See how much more we could have come and reduced our overhang here? I could have brought those way up. And if I were actually towing this down the road, I would have probably done that, but I'm not. So we're gonna leave this right here. So now we look under. Man, we are close to all those tie rods and stuff. All right, again, if this was a truck I was towing, I would need to put the blocks under the tires to raise it to get height off that tie rod so I don't bend it when I do the hookup you're about to see, but this is an old junk school bus that I'm not worried about, so we're not gonna do all of that. So now that we've got it up to the, we either backed under it or pulled it up to you, whatever we're doing, we're gonna come under here, we're gonna hit shift again to get out of winch mode. And now we're going to extend our curbside leg. You see that comes out and it comes way back here. Hopefully it goes past that fuel tank over there, which I think it will. And it just barely does, it's close enough. So now we'll extend our driver's side leg and bring it out as well. And then this one should come back to the same point right here. Perfect. Now what we do is we retract our boom cylinders to lift these up. And that's where I said uh, I would need to pick the front of this thing up in order to not bend that tie rod, but I'm not super worried about it because this is an old junk school bus, so we're not gonna worry about that. But So now we pick these up as much as we can without hitting anything under the bus and we go get our chains. Okay, we're under the bus. We've got our chassis here and there's multiple ways we can be hooking stuff up here. Obviously this has a body on top of the chassis. Some vehicles do, some don't. In this case, there is room to go over the top of the chassis to grab onto it. Some vehicles with a body on top, there's not. There's like a wood block here for the subframe, all that stuff. If not, we have this device right here, which goes under the chassis, grabs it right there and you can see those holes line up, and I should have grabbed the shackle to show this, but I'll do that. Hold on. Okay, got shackle. Woo! Almost lost a kneecap there. So that goes in, this goes here. So it would be really helpful to have three hands because that's the wrong freaking shackle. Okay, whatever. If I put this pin here, you get the point. That's there, pretend that's there. Pretend the shackle's hanging down from it. This is obviously the wrong one. It's actually the one for tying down the rear of the unit that I just brought over. So that would go there. You see the issue though is you're very limited on space to put a chain between and hook these together. But if you look on the inside, you could see 
how this thing is designed to sit and just grab the bottom flange of the frame right here and it grabs it right up at the edge of the web where it's got plenty of strength. So now here are where some tricks of the true hitch come in. The idea is to hook a chain to this, hook a chain to whatever is up here on the bottom of the frame. You obviously want this to be as short of a distance as possible, but you can bring this down some. So what we would do in this case, obviously, shackle is too long to put a chain through since they do that. So you could either do this and shackle the two together, which is totally acceptable and fine, or you slide this forward and you take a chain and just wrap the leg. And you could do it like that, or you could wrap the chain through the shackle and make the chain into a big loop that hooks two together and just wrap it around the leg. And you can wrap this leg anywhere along its distance. You don't have to hook to the end. And when it's wrapped around there, it can't slide off the end because of this big flange right there. So guys sometimes have problems with not being able to get enough lift tight out of it because this dropped down so far before everything pulled tight because of that just move up and wrap the leg. Granted, you've got better strength, you're putting less pressure on the frame, less stress for this to lift the vehicle the farther back you get. So ideally, the farther away you can get the better, but moving up a foot to wrap the leg to get the height you need is just fine. So, I'm gonna get this out of here because we're not gonna use this in this case. But that's a true hitch frame clamp. And it does work really well. So what we're gonna do, if I can get the right chains over here, we're going to take our frame hook that actually might not fit now that I'm looking at it. Oh, it will. Oh, it does it, perfect. So frame hook just grabs the top flange of the frame. We're gonna come down. You could see the problem I would have if I just looped through here. hook this back to itself that's a way too much slack so we'll take that out we're not going to use that what I had with my old one I need to make up again is I had some slip hooks the big loose hooks you know that like grab something like this really easy hooked with two chain links right to a grab hook so what you could do is put your slip hook, actually here's one right here, this is a foundry hook. But either way, you could put this here, and on the other end it had a grab hook, and you could hook the chain right wherever you wanted, and basically it didn't matter how long the rest of this was, you made the length you needed. So that's an option, but what we're gonna do is move this up one, grab our frame, and we're gonna go under, wrap the leg like that. Now I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same thing. I won't show you that because it's the same thing. Okay, other side's hooked up. Total pain with that bracket right in the way, but we got it. Now, if I would have moved those, those, I'm gonna sit down, those tire stops up there forward another two feet that we have the clearance to do, those legs would be two feet farther back on the bus where everything's wide open to get to the frames and would have made hooking up that other side way, way easier. So that's probably what I should have done, but I didn't, so. Let's pick this thing up. Now, this is where the magic of the true hitch happens. If you look under here, see the axle sitting right there. If this was any taller of a vehicle, we put it on blocks like we should have, everything like that, we would have more room between the axle and the legs of the true hitch. Two, we could put blocks in there as spacers, which that's why there's a bunch of, I don't know if you can see, but up in there, there's a bunch of different sizes of wooden blocks for this reason. We could put blocks in there, spacers. We could put rubber pads in there to make it not slide around, which it's not gonna do. And then we take our remote and now the axle has that unit on it right there. The chains are stopping those legs from going down. 
So if we extend these cylinders, this tries to go down, which the chains won't let it do because they're hooked to the frame, which means the front is going to have to come up. And this part is going to lift the axle, which is up against these stops also, so it can't come forward. And it's going to lift this whole bus up in the air, as you'll see right now. See, chains just went tight. The bus is lifted. The chains are going to do their thing to find their spot. The front ends up in the air. What we want is the front part of the true hitch to be level, which we are just about at. We could even maybe just go a little bit more right in there. So now we also just lifted our transport legs up. So then we grab this lever and those are supposed to flip all the way out of the way. They're hitting something right now. I don't know what, but whatever. For our demonstration purposes, they're catching. That's supposed to fold all the way over and those things flip all the way up inside of there. But now that that's up, we can now take our mass cylinders and extend them. And now we're lifting the bus up in the air. And now if you look, that kind of drops down when we do. So we can extend to level it. And you see what's happening here. This is where the true hitch weight transfer makes all the difference in the world. So what we essentially did here, if you look, is we essentially attached a hydraulic gooseneck from like a low bed onto the front of the vehicle we're towing. So with any traditional wrecker, rollback, whatever it's using an underreach, they're a teeter-totter. That unit comes down just like this, but it's forked the axle. The hinge point is there at the axle. The weight is being applied at the axle. It's all rigid up here. So that becomes your fulcrum and it pulls the front of the vehicle up. So the more weight you put back here, the more weight you take off of there. And that's why it gets so heavy on the drive axles. But if you look here, there is no fulcrum there. That's all now one rigid unit all the way through because the chains are holding it there. That frame and that frame are the same thing at this point. Rigid, rigid, rigid all the way through. The fifth wheel becomes your hinge point just like when you're pulling a trailer. So since my fifth wheel is slightly ahead of my drive axles right now, all that weight that's being put here because it's being pried down is transferred through this whole unit all the way up there and going straight down on my fifth wheel, meaning I am actually adding weight to my front axle while towing this vehicle instead of taking it away from my front axle like I would with literally any type of underreach truck out there. That is where the true hitch makes all the difference in the world when it comes to towing super heavy vehicles is we're not overloading our drive axles. We're not taking all of our steer weight off the front end. We're carrying it just like if it was a trailer and we just turned whatever the super heavy thing was into a trailer. This unit is rated to tow 130,000 pounds. So for when it comes to heavy, heavy stuff, this thing's got it. So now what we do is I got to find the pin over here. This is the pin. This is the pin. Oh, it's a new one too. So remember, I still got to tell you the story about how I ended up with this thing again. So we come up here, you see these holes? This is actually not the pin, it's too small. But there's different holes at different spaces. We're gonna put that one in there because that's the angle we want. And now when we retract our boom, all that weight just sat on that pin. The hydraulics are not carrying the load. Like I said, that's supposed to be a bigger pin, but it's not right now, so oh well. Actually, we can stay over here because we still have these pins as well. And we are going to look at our angles. I'm going to extend until that hole lines up. Put the pin in there. I'm going to come to the other side where that hole should be lined up. Grab my pin. Oh, it's not quite lined up. I'm gonna come down a little. There. Now when we, we just set the weight on the pins. They're locked in place. You would put this on the other side for your safety. Same with this one here. The other one will go on the other side. And now this unit is locked. All the hydraulics are locked out. You could 
you can take the hydraulic cylinders off right now. It's all being held on the weight of the pins, so nothing's going to move. That is now all completely rigid all the way through, meaning all that heavy, heavy front end weight, like loaded garbage trucks, loaded cement mixers, utility trucks, uh, loaded big like multi-axle dump trucks with 20,000 pounds on the front axle, and then you know, 12 to 14,000 pounds on all the lift axles that are now in the air and all that weight's being transferred up here. All of that weight is going straight onto your fifth wheel. And then where your fifth wheel is positioned, if I could slide my fifth wheel way up and I could add a bunch of weight to the front end of my truck. But since my truck's already 13.6 on the front axle empty, we don't need to do that. So we could adjust our fifth wheel just like if we're pulling a trailer and change our weight distribution, but none of the weight is prying back on the truck like a wrecker does. So when it comes to super heavy towing, this thing wins hands down, no two ways about it. But it loses in literally every other category. As you could see, that is way more work to hook up than that Zach lift over there. That thing is so much faster, so much easier, so much more user friendly than this unit right here. And that's still also capable of towing a hell of a lot of weight and lifting a lot of weight. That Zach lift, as a matter of fact, when I'm using that unit, my limit of what I can tow is that truck. Uh, this truck is short for a wrecker, even though it looks like long for a truck, it's really short for a heavy wrecker. And that Zach lift is rated when it's retracted to lift 34,000 pounds of axle weight. So I could go to a fully loaded dump truck that's got 34,000, the max legal weight on the drives, grab it from the back and lift that fully loaded dump truck from the rear with the Zach lift and I'm within its ratings. This truck, however, will be doing a wheelie if I do that. So even though the Zach lift is capable, this size of truck is not. But this unit makes it where that size of truck doesn't matter. This truck is a 276 inch wheelbase. When I had my uh, true hitch unit, the other one of the, the, the twin to this one, I used it on two different trucks. Both were cab over short wheelbase. One was a 186 inch wheelbase. The other was a 164 inch wheelbase. A 164 inch wheelbase, you put an underreach on the back, it couldn't tow a freaking Volkswagen before you lost your front end weight. But with this unit, since it puts the weight right on the fifth wheel, it doesn't matter. It's totally fine. So one, this thing is a ton of work to hook up, takes a lot of time, especially if you have to winch the vehicle up on the blocks to gain your clearance and do all that stuff, get it all hooked up in there, depending on how you're gonna do. You have to really, really operate this unit, pay a lot of attention to what you're doing. Like I said, if this was a real tow, I would have pulled this all the way up there only to realize those are in the wrong spot. Meaning I would have had to pull forward a little bit to loosen those up, move them forward, pull this thing again, then up onto blocks at the same time so I had the clearance I needed, then do all of that stuff, then do all of this stuff with that Zach lift unit. Oh, also keep in mind, we would still have to do pull and drive shaft out, run and air for brakes and stuff and light bar and all the other stuff that I didn't show would still have to be done. And that's another big thing of pulling the drive line. With the Zach lift, you see me use the remote while I'm underneath to roll the truck back and forth to rotate the drive shaft so I can get to all the drive shaft bolts in an easy spot. With this, obviously you can't do that. So if I go in to pull the drive shaft now, I'm just stuck with however the drive shaft is sitting and however hard it is to get to all the bolts. That's just what I have to deal with and it makes pulling the drive shaft way harder. In addition to the fact that if this was a shorter wheelbase truck, the drive shaft coupling might be up where those legs are and now I have those legs in the way of trying to get myself in there to get the drive shaft too. And on some, you even have to pull the drive shaft out ahead of time, which is a total pain to do because now the truck's sitting all the way on the ground you don't have anywhere near as much clearance under there. Where with the Zach lift, I can pick the thing way up extra high, which I can't do with this, have all the room to sit in there and do drive shaft bolts and run the truck back and forth. It just makes it a million times easier. You have none of those options with this but you have correct weight distribution. Now also, if we were gonna tow this thing, I'll put some pictures, I'm not gonna chain all this up right now, but I'll put some pictures of how I used to tow the big six by six utility trucks. I think those trucks are about 50,000 pounds total weight. They were 20,000 on the steer axle and 40, no, sorry, 30 on the drives. That way they had some room for their gear before they overloaded their drives, but they were heavy, heavy steers. What you do is you hook a chain or a binder to this right here. Your binder sits in this spot right here the chain goes around that under this and then goes up and grabs the leaf pack or the axle right there and either way you can also just grab the axle right there 
you're pulling into these tire stops and by pulling the force into these tire stops it can't go side to side it can't move especially if you put little rubber pads under the axle right there where i didn't and it's pulling since it's going underneath this it's pulling down and into the tire stop so the tires can't ride up and over this if you were to slam on the brakes and they can't go side to side everything's locked in place so that's how you would chain down the front is through that there's there's different ways to chain down obviously with different vehicles it's going to be different how you do it but then the rear is obviously held up right there. You could use the shackles on the back, clevises, whatever the hell you want to call them. You can just wrap the legs like we did right there to gain some more height out of this. That's the thing people complain is they can't get the height they need. And uh, you, you can get really creative on that end as well. Like I said, this unit can do a lot, a lot of stuff if you're really creative and you're really willing to work for it but it is not easy. It's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. It's the exact opposite of that Zach left. So now say we're all hooked up. We're chained down, drive shaft pulled, airlines ran. You see right here, it has this airline that definitely needs to be replaced that would go back to charge the air tanks of the vehicle you're towing. And then right here, it has this glide hand. This is your service brakes that that all needs to be replaced for sure. Uh, I'm gonna, this unit was brand new, oops when i sold it brand new uh it does not look brand new anymore we'll also get into why that is here in just a minute we're almost there i promise but that blue glad hand there is hooked into you see on the front i don't have them hooked up right now i just got power hooked up but your air and electric all plug in here just like a trailer and then just like a trailer this thing pivots on the fifth wheel as you turn and does all its movement on the fifth wheel exactly like a trailer because essentially we just turned this bus into a hydraulic neck trailer just like a low bed most low beds would be so obviously you got to have your lines here just like they would be off a trailer air and electric hooked up here so when you air up your trailer that air goes all the way through to this airs up the vehicle you're towing the blue line when you step on the brakes sends air through here applies brakes to the vehicle you're towing if you know you hook up all the brake stuff so that is how you operate a true hitch you see it's got rotating lights up there so you turn on if you want your lights going toolboxes on the side the lights the lights do work and then the work lights of the unit do work as well and then this thing should be flipped all the way over which pulls those feet all the way up inside. What I should show you now though, that it's unfolded is up here, this is really cool and kind of tricky. Since this unit folds upside down for transport, like in that photo I showed you of when I went and picked them up, and then it, it, it basically does a backward somersault into itself on the ground, all using its electric pumps, and then unfolds back out to hook up to a truck. So this battery box right here rotates so that as this goes that way, you see all the lines have to go around it, the cables, whatever, have to go around it this way, so that as it flips over backwards, the batteries stay level the entire time and this ends up the other way around. On this cross member here is the hydraulic tank. The pumps just draw directly out of the hydraulic tank right here. Notice that's in the middle and there's a vent on top and a vent on the bottom and the bottom vent is closed right now. When you get this thing 90 degrees upright, you then shut this vent and open that one and then as it continues to go over that becomes the top and this becomes the bottom so then your vent down there is now on top pretty clever design of this whole thing okay now we're going to unhook this thing and set all this back down then i'll show you some of the other stuff this thing can do in terms of like recovery lifting and uh, things like that because it actually does have quite a few other tricks up its sleeve and also how i ended up with it again so like i said i sold it because i bought uh two of them i really only wanted one so i bought a pair that's what i could buy in the auction sold the one kept the other they're both brand new never used um what do we got to do first we got to extend our mass just a little to take pressure off the pin take out the pin i believe this is the size of pin that's supposed to go in there it is so i got to get some more of this size pin so the mast is up now we got to extend the boom take the pressure off of that pin which goes over here take this pin out 
The remote is really handy. I didn't have a remote on mine. The guy I sold this to added the whole remote setup for it. Mine did not have a remote, so I had to run the levers manually over there, which was a total pain with lining up the legs underneath because the levers are obviously up here on the other side. You can't see what's going on under there. So you had to do little movements, look, little movements, look. For winching stuff on, you needed someone else to sit up and steer. It was, it was not ideal, but I ran it that way for quite a while, towed a lot of stuff with it. And I mean, I got by because that's what you have to do sometimes. So we will now lower our mast down to bring this thing back down into the ground. And now we will retract our boom to tilt back down, which set the front end on the ground. And we're gonna lift our legs to slack our chains. And now we can go unhook our chains. Now remember, with an underreach, you hook to it first, so you can do all your lifting and lowering to gain clearance under here to do all this type of stuff. With this unit, you have to do all this type of stuff with them on the ground. Okay. to lower those down Let's get more clear to get those chains out okay so now we'll extend back out and we just gain clearance down there and we can actually I believe we can retract yes we can get that out of the way one retract number two and there's a couple ways we can get out from under this thing depending on what exactly it is you want to do in the situation you're in okay let me get my chains out the other thing I kind of failed to mention you can do if you need you're limited on your options of what you can hook to up in there is you can go straight up with the chain and wrap a cross member if you need to if you need to get farther up in there or don't have like an open spot on the chain to grab you can grab cross members and pull down on those and it's just fine too so how do we get all this out from under there first we got to hit shift and then winch out and we will unhook our winch we will pull that in. We'll hook that back up to its D-rings once we get this out of here. So what we could do is we could push down on these to lift up on this, fold those transport stands back down, and then this would be sitting back on the back of the truck. And then we could lift our mast and tilt to where everything's clear in here and then drive out from under it. But in this case, where we have that much room, probably not even, between everything under here, what we'll do is we will just, there we go. Oh, I know why, shift. We will just give ourselves just that little bit of tilt there. And then I'm gonna drive out and I'm gonna drag these on the ground out from under the bus. That way they don't, as I go over any bumps or anything like that, they don't kick up and hit stuff. That's what you'd have to do on like any vehicle. But if you're on like good pavement in a parking lot, you don't want to do that. You just got, but if you're on good pavement in a parking lot, you're probably not going to have the rough ground problem also. So in this case, I'm just going to drag it out. Okay, it's out. So now before, we get too carried away here. I'm gonna show you some of the other options this thing has. One, I wish this unit had, but this one does not. My other one didn't either. Uh, I kind of made my own. 
There is an option on these for a 30,000 pound hydraulic winch to sit right here. And there's a pulley wheel that goes on top of the mast up there. And that winch then goes up over the top and then can go pull on whatever you're trying to winch out. So you can do winch out recoveries with this thing, but obviously that pulley wheel doesn't pivot because otherwise it just twists this over in your fifth wheel. So it can only pull in a straight line, but what you can do is you can run that cable over the top to either this shackle or one of those with a snatch block and then run it out to what you're trying to winch out and you can drag this thing around sideways or whatever angle from your truck and then you what are we on right now on nope then you can angle these into the ground by lifting up the mast not too high though to come out of that track this is where those shackles should be in there i'm watching though and then do this And now look, you got spades to dig in the ground and they actually make a spade cap that goes over the ends of those that then spade into the ground. But now if I were to be winching off the top of that out there, that's like my boom being up in the air on the Zach lift, coming down to something and it'll dig those into the ground and then you can do like 30,000 pound winches, which is the same size as what's on the Zach lift. But you can really only pull straight off the mast, but you can drag this sideways with the winch to point it at whatever you're pulling then do this and now you can use it for recovery. Um, on the one I kept, I put an 18,000 pound electric winch on the front of it and my own pulley wheel on top so that I could do this. I think I only ever used it once for that, but I used an electric winch so that I could uh, run this on any truck and it was just an easier winch to use because it had remote control and stuff like that and the rest of my unit was not remote. So that is one of the recovery options for this thing the other is you could do this same thing and use this 10,000 pound winch and then you can snatch block back to any of these d-rings up here you could wrap right back around this big bar you could run a snatch block and chain to the top of the mast up there and come out to a snatch block and back to the top of the mast to get yourself some height on your pole to help dig these in you've got options like i said you can do a lot with this if you're creative enough and willing to work hard enough. Whereas with something like Zach Lift, you just do what you want to do and it's easy. So that is how you can do some recovery with it. We will actually, let's hook the chains for this winch back up. We hit shift to go back into winch mode and then winch out. So this is a 10,000 pound winch. You can do a lot with a 10,000 pound winch with enough snatch blocks and tenacity I guess you want to call it but we'll hook these back up and I don't think I'm on the same one here there it is close enough so that winch right there will let you do a lot. The opposite thing you could do is lift stuff with this unit. So if we retract, oh, shift out of winch mode, back to unit mode, retract this down, retract our masks down. And we're gonna go all the way down on the mast until it bottoms out, which is right there. Oh, also, let me show you this real quick. Say I needed to pre-pick. In towing world, you guys know what pre-picking is, where you stick your underreach under, lift the front end to put blocks under the tires, like you guys see me do these videos a million times. You can pre-pick with this unit. You would extend out. So if this thing was totally immobile and I needed to put blocks under the tires, I could do this. I could extend out until both of these are underneath that axle like so and then how you're supposed to do it is you tilt up like so and then come up here and get some blocks uh, 
let's use these blocks. You can never have enough blocks. So you're supposed to take these blocks and put right here. This is what they say to do. And now when you retract your boom down, you just created a fulcrum that will then go as that goes down, lift the vehicle up and look, you can stick blocks under it to pre-pick. So now we can pull these back in. I'll show you some ways you can lift things with this. So now we will boom retract, which brings this up. Actually, I'm already screwing up and forgetting something. I'm not gonna do it because we're not really gonna lift anything right now, but I gotta show you what you're supposed to do. So, we would go till we're probably flat right there. Now back up in the front of this unit, you might have noticed earlier, these chain slots here. You take chain here and you hook it down and you grab the bottom of your own frame. Just like kind of opposite of what we did on that bus and it holds the front of this unit down to your truck. And once you got the front end of your unit held down to your truck, you can retract the boom. See like right now when I pick up, it just lifted on my fifth wheel because you know, we're teetering off of that right there. But you lift this up You leave that into the ground, front ends chained down to the truck, and we can take that 10,000 pound winch and we can go off of those snatch blocks, these snatch blocks, or we can extend the legs out and go off of those snatch blocks and we now have 10,000 pounds of lifting capacity. Like we could hook to that bus right there if I chain the front end down and my truck was long enough to hold it and not tip. See, it's basically just created outriggers right there in the back, like stiff legs on the Zach lift. And we could lift the front of that bus up in the air. Actually that, no, I'd lift that. I doubt that weighs 10,000 pounds. It would do it. But using snatch blocks and creativity and chains, and all this is actually in the operator's manual for this. This is nothing I made up. This is actually how they say you can use this unit in the operator's manual. So that's how you can lift things. If you need to lift something really heavy, you can bring this all the way up with the mast all the way down. Oops, what did I hit? Oh, I think it was just the unit settling. Oh, it was the, it was the transport legs hitting because they're not folded all the way up. So we won't go any farther, but you could put this up at a really steep angle, including like all the way straight up. And now you can run your snatch block off of that right down off the back of the truck. And you've got a ton of lifting power if you put enough snatch blocks in there. So say we're done towing. Those are some of the extra things you can do with this. We want to put this unit away so that we can go back down the road onto our next tow. So I'll, I'll fold it up and show you how it folds up. And then I'll show you how we remove it off of the truck and how it takes itself off of the truck. But what we do is we would put our legs down and retract our mask. Yes, legs down, tilt up make room for our transport stands. And if they weren't hung up on whatever they're hung up on, oh, I think it's this pin right here. They would very easily just grab this lever and fold them down, but they're being dumb. So we might have to hit them with a block from the other side. There they go. Blocks are good for everything. Don't fall. So now our transport stands are back down, meaning we can retract this, which brings this down. 
Okay, we're sitting flat on the ground now, so we don't go anymore. So now we extend our mast, which will bring those all the way down onto the back of the truck, and then start lifting this unit off the ground. Now, we retract our legs. I keep calling them the boom, the legs. They call it the boom because when it's out like that, it's a boom. I call it the legs because, I don't know, I call it the legs. But this comes up. We're now sitting on our transport stands. The sand that we dug into the legs from doing that and this is gonna fall out. That's why there's holes in the back side of this is to let it go through. And every once in a while I used to take a hose and just hose in here and it would flush all the sand and stuff out. But now that we're folded all the way up, we need to extend until this lines up with this, which should be this arrow with this hole. So we extend, wait for our holes to line up, which is right in there. And then we put our pin back in come to the other side it is lined up as well so now since we're over here we're going to stay over here and we're going to now retract which without those pins in just makes the mass slide up and down its track but since we just pinned it and we also lifted this high enough that it came out of the blocks that lock it into the you know, picture inside of here there's a piece like this and that backside plate of the mast runs up and down here this piece this right here is down behind it so now it can't come out of there at all it's locked in place once we lift up high enough where that comes out of it now it can swing out of here that's kind of what's going on inside of there so now when we retract instead of the mask going down it comes out of its pocket see i guess i could have just showed you right here here's that plate and you see we're high enough to be out of those blocks in there that have the space behind them that it slides up and down in so we now continue to retract and this whole unit folds down we do want to check before those legs land on the frame they're not going to hit anything and they've got room to slide so now that it's down we pull this pin back out put it back here and we'd put our cross pin in to go down the road. So we pull this pin. So now we just retracted to get it to do that, but we pulled the pins. So now when we extend, instead of standing back up like it would if the pins were in, it's gonna slide this whole mast forward. And we're not supposed to slide past this arrow and I'll show you why in just a minute. Very important. So there, if we come up here, you could see these transport legs. Now you see right there, when this slides, I'll retract it back and forward. That's about where that pinhole lines up. This will keep, the control got sticky. I can see the lever up there trying to move, but it's kind of stuck. From rust but either way um, this will keep coming forward way up here which obviously when those hit this will snap this off you can see how this is kind of bent because that happened to it at one point luckily he stopped before he snapped them off now what's going on back here there it goes so these control valves are obviously very rusty I've been working on them. I've gone through so many cans of penetrating oil on this thing since I got it back. But now you can see See, they'll hit it and it'll keep going. You don't want to do that. So now what you would do, you're in this position, you come get these shackles here that obviously don't work for the frame clamps and you put them right here and then you cross chain to the frame of your truck. And once you put those chains there, you slide this back a little like that. 
and it pulls those chains tight and locks them in place and this thing is ready to go down the road. All right, we're back at our parking spot. We're done with our tow, we're back home. We need to pull this thing off so that we can either hook back up to the Zach lift or up to our low bed or whatever we're gonna do, which in my case is actually some maintenance on this truck. So we would come over here, we would slide it forward a little to loosen up these chains back here, take them off. Now we will retract our mast rams to line up this arrow with this hole. Kind of gonna reverse the process like we do to load, but there's one very important thing we have to do. Pin in there. Pin in there. Now when we extend, instead of sliding forward, it stands up. We're gonna go all the way into our track. And once it hits the track, we keep going just a little bit. And you see it moved up some, which takes the weight off the pin. And I just stay on this side so that I can pull the pin right back out. Take our pins out. Now we're going to extend the legs, lay, or lay the legs down. I guess technically we're supposed to by the operator's manual. Lower that down far enough and put those bottom shackles in. That way now it can't come out of its tracks, but if I were to extend up, whatever, we're not doing that. So, I just bring the legs down. All the shackles flip over and make a bunch of dinging noises. I think that's the last one. Until we're level, now we'll bring our mast down and under here we're going to lift up on the truck and we're going to do a balance of tilting and mast movement to try to make this as level as possible. I think right in there. Now we take our transport legs. I gotta figure out what they're hitting. They're supposed to fold all the way around. But either way, I should have dumped my air suspension before I did that, but I didn't. So now we make sure we're going to put a little pressure on the fifth wheel. And now we can pull our fifth wheel. Hold on. Remember I said there was one very important thing? I totally forgot to do it. Before we do any of that, luckily I didn't pull off from under it, we extend our legs, both of them, all the way out. Because as it sits right now, there is so much weight up here and not enough back here that when I pull out, it'll fall over on its face. And then these will be up in the air and it'll be totally face down, ass up situation we don't want to get into. So, we extend the legs out and that is enough weight out far enough to counterbalance all of this and it won't tip over on us. There, now we can kill our PTO, we can shut off our power to the unit, we're done with this, get rid of our electrical, go get rid of the PTO, some pressure out. Now we just connect the lines. This is a mess because I wasn't like actually hooking it all up correctly. I was just throwing it on here to demonstrate. Okay. And now we're good to pull out from under it.
So now, the story of how I got my old true hitch back and why it does not look quite as new as when I sold it. So, as I said, I sold this to a guy up here in Oregon. Uh, he had a tow company, um, did some heavy stuff. He had done heavy stuff previously. Bought this to do some heavy stuff again. Used it. He set it all up with the wireless remotes. Uh, converted over to be used by PTO because uh, originally these were electric operation only, not PTO capable. So he did the plumbing to make it work if you run off PTO as well. Uh, and then the switches and stuff for that. And he used it a grand total of three times, three toes. So this unit is a 2006. I bought it brand new, still packaged up for shipping set it up, hooked it to one truck just to make sure full function and power and everything was there and then sold it. He did a bunch of stuff to it to kind of modernize a lot of the things and then he towed three trucks with it. So this thing has been hooked to a total of four trucks since 2006, brand new, and has towed three. And then he pulled it off of his truck, uh, decided not to go with the heavy to towing thing and stuck to light duty towing and this unit sat in his yard for the last five years. It was about six years ago, no, five years ago, five and a half, I don't know, something like that. It sat in his yard for five years. Now, he's over on the coast. When I say on the coast, if, if this is where it was sitting, that's the ocean. Like, could not be any closer to the ocean. And anyone from the Oregon coast knows metal on the coast rusts. So this came out of a military base over in the Sierra, northern Sierra Nevada mountain range, a military depot out there where a lot of the stuff is. And uh, it's a jet. Uh, that's where that trailer over there was. It did, Nothing rusts there. It's kind of like the same climate here. It's such a dry, arid climate that we don't have rust. It simply does not happen. You want an example? Come, come with me this way and look. These are my tire chains. I took these tire chains off last winter and threw them here. They've sat in rain, they've sat in snow, everything since last winter season. They're not rusty. No rest. Things just don't rest here. But on the coast, 100 yards from the water, things rust. Luckily on this unit, it did not get into structural category. It's purely surface rust. There's nothing structural. There's no rust jacking in any of the metal. Even when I pulled those things off, nothing structural, just purely surface rust that is all, can just be wire wheeled brushed, some POR 15 or something on there, some new paint over the top of it, and we are good to go. It's still a good unit. The problem was everything that moves, like this screw here, that turnbuckle there, uh, every one of these controls here, which is why the remote was having trouble. The remote activates this solenoid here, which then puts an electrical charge to whichever one of these you want to run, and it physically moves the lever when you press the button on the remote. But these levers were so freaking stiff, you could hardly do them by hand, so the solenoid had zero chance of it. So like I said, a lot of penetrating oil, a lot of WD-40 on this unit, lots of grease and everything because it was bone dry and I finally got stuff to start moving again. This transport stands clearly needs some more work. The solenoids for the electric pump were pretty well stuck in place. I'm gonna have to replace both of the solenoids for the pumps because when you push the button, sometimes, I have it off right now, but sometimes they'll finally go and when you let off, sometimes they'll stop, sometimes they do not and that's not good. So gotta replace both of those solenoids to be able to run it off of electric operation. Uh, obviously, Hoses need to be replaced. I want to get all new pins for it just so they're not rusty and they slide in nice and easy and smooth. Try to figure out how to wire wheel out the inside of all the pinholes. Uh, I got to put air to everything and test once I put new hoses on it. Test airflow, make sure all that's functioning and working because I do have a job coming up for this unit next week where I could technically do it with the Zach lift, but I'm gonna do it with this because this is actually the better. It is a concrete truck going interstate. So heavy front axle truck going across state lines. Granted it states I already have permits for with that unit so I can do it, but why not do it with this and be legal weights all the way through? So that's what I'm gonna do. So 
why, what made me want to buy this back and how did I end up with it? Well, back to story time. Um, hurricanes in North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, all of those. You guys all know that's been happening. You, you, a lot of you saw what we did to help out the circus and what so many of you did to help out the circus as well. Uh, update on that, those shows have been sold out completely without people having to buy the tickets. It's every single show is packed house and they even added two more shows to the schedule while they're there. The, the whole crew said they wanted, the, the performers, everyone, they wanted to do more shows so more people get to come to the surf, circus and enjoy it. Great, great thing that all of you did helping out. So much appreciated by both myself, the circus crew, and then the people of that area in the Asheville, North Carolina area. Um, a lot of them said exactly what I kind of thought it would be of it was a night to take a break from everything and just go out, have some fun as a family, forget all the troubles for a moment and just smile and laugh. And that's what they did. Great, great thing. But either way, the hurricanes, uh, obviously the power's out everywhere out there. Uh, utility companies from here in the West Coast were sending big, big old fleets of crews over, um, I think between PG&E and SoCal Edison, I think they sent like 300 trucks over or something like that. A lot of those being those big six by six uh, utility trucks sent out. Well, those things, 20,000 pounds on the front axle, got to go across the entire country. Obviously, weight is a problem and trying to permit all of those states all the way across, total pain in the ass. Luckily, because of the hurricane going on and the, the FMCSA issued some emergency exemptions to the hours of service regulations, some weight laws, stuff like that. Guys are able to hook on them with wreckers, throw them on low beds and go and get them all out there and make it happen. I got called to do it as well and asked to take a few out, but um, I, with stuff I had going on here, work I had, meetings I couldn't miss, things are gone, some stuff at Riley School, I just could not make the trip across the country. I wished I could have, I really wanted to go to get some trucks out there to help out with bringing the power on. Luckily they got it all covered, so the fact that I did or didn't do it didn't matter, they got them all out there. Um, but I really wanted to, I wanted to help out. And that got me thinking about my old True Hitch, because when I had my old True Hitch, uh, I used to tow for pg &E, and I towed a lot of their bucket trucks, a lot of their smaller trucks. I did a lot of towing for pg &E in my area of Northern California. So I know how well this unit tows those things and how it scales on your weights and everything because I've done it a bunch. Uh, so I've kind of, ever since I got a truck back, even with the Zach lift, I've wanted another true hitch because of what they're capable of in the super heavy towing category horrible for it, literally everything else. But as far as weights, when you're in the super heavy category, this is the unit to have. They are about impossible to find. They are so freaking hard to find. Um, for a long time, they didn't sell them to the public, only to the military. I believe they're selling them to the public again now, over the last few years, five years, whatever. I'm not 100% certain. I've heard that, I haven't seen it, but they're really, really, really expensive um, for something that's kind of a one trick pony. So it didn't make sense to buy a new one. Could not find any used ones. I've actually never seen another used one for sale in the government auction since I bought these two. But like I said, I sold this one to a guy up in Oregon. That guy kind of stopped doing the heavy towing, towing stuck to light duty. I know him, we've stayed in touch over the years, especially now that I've moved up to Oregon, but he's like four hours away on the coast. Um, I'd always kind of kept my eye out for another one of these on the government auctions, never saw one, always wanted one back. But then once that thing came up with all those heavy trucks happened to go interstates, like, man, I really, really wish I had one. I got to seriously looking again, could not find any anywhere. And then I remembered that about two years ago, a year or two ago, he shut down his towing business. And he, he got a job offer in a totally different industry that he couldn't turn down. So he took it, closed down the towing business, and I didn't know if he still had any equipment, what he had, what he didn't, anything like that. So I just texted him like, hey, do you still have that old true hitch? And he replied with, in five minutes, he replied with, yes, and I want to sell it. And it was like, perfect. So we made a deal. I went over and picked it up, brought it home. It, like I said, it's been sitting on the coast, right? I mean, water, true hitch, five years. So it took a lot of going through and a lot of rewiring and because a lot of the wiring was corroded and a lot of stuff to make it a functional unit again, but it's there, it's functional, it works. And I could take it out right now and tow some stuff with it. I do need to replace that air hose. 
when that one there. I mean, if I had to, I could just run air straight off the back of my truck and bypass this stuff completely, but I'm going to get it all functional with that too before that job next week. Um, but that's how I ended up with a true hitch again. And oddly enough, it ended up being one of my old true hitches that I bought out of the military and then sold. And now it's come back full circle. So there's my true hitch. It, I've definitely have uses for it in the super heavy tow category. Um, I've got called for stuff with my Zach lift that it is capable of, but my truck is not. And I don't want, a lot of people said, you just extend the chassis on your truck. I don't want to do that. I do not, that truck is already too long for where I want to go with that low bed and the type of low bed jobs I have to do. For most people, it could be another eight feet longer and it wouldn't matter. They could still pull low bed all over the place just fine. And then it'd be a hell of a lot better as a wrecker. But for me and the mountains and the tight stuff I get into, that truck's already really, really pushing length. And it's a little too long as it is, but any shorter and it'd be horrible as a wrecker. So I have had to turn down quite a few towing calls that the Zach lift could handle, but my short truck could not. This makes it where I don't have to turn those down anymore. I can take on those jobs with this and I can swap back and forth between the Zach lift, this, the low bed, the flat bed, whatever else I want to do now with that one truck. So that is really starting to make this whole fleet even just that much more versatile. It's definitely still the Zach lift is going to be 100% the primary thing you could see it's a mess here i've had a project going on trying to get this thing running doing maintenance on the rollback so much stuff going on but zach lift still 100 percent be the primary because it is so much better at literally everything else and also capable of towing the super heavy stuff just my truck's a little short to do it so that'll still be the main number one but this will be a very nice tool to have in my back pocket for when i get called for that super heavy stuff either way that's the true hitch that's what it is, that's how it works. That's how I ended up buying back my old true hitch. Even a little bit upgraded because now it's got the PTO plumbing on it and the wireless remote, which I never had on mine. So that's really cool. This truck, I'm gonna take it down to the shop, start doing some maintenance on it. Thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time.